So one of the most common types of rigs that you're going to have to create as you start creating animation rigs for your animators is a bipedal rig. That means a rig that has two legs or two feet. Um, usually a humanistic or a people-ish type animation rig. Um, you'll find that you, you probably will be working on these types of rigs you know, 75% of the time, depending on what type of uh, a studio you work for. If it's one that's doing creature work, may not be quite bipedal, but a lot of the same rules are going to apply as if you were just creating humanistic characters. So what we'll do is we'll take a look at that as a great way of introducing you into how to create animation rigs that your animators are going to really love. So how do you know what to do when you start creating a bipedal rig? Well, the first thing you need to do is, of course, look at reference and start sketching and get an idea for the types of motion and the types of poses that you're going to need to be able to create. So, for example, with a human rig here, here I've got a character that's walking. You know, it's your animators aren't going to be very happy if they can't move the character around, so you need to be able to account for the fact that, yes, the character is going to be moving around and walking. Here, standing with his hands on his hips, that's another great thing that you need to be able to do. That means some sort of inverse kinematic solution where the hands will stick on the hips and the elbows will do the right thing. Um, here you've got a character lifting up a box. Something that people may need to do is lift things up. Here you've got one pushing a box with his, his uh, body getting a nice straight line through here. Um, maybe the character likes to run. Yay, happy run. You can see you get a nice curve going on all the way from the head down through the back and into that leg. Here you've got an inverse curve of a character being very depressed, sitting on a bench, maybe got stood up for a date, and then after sitting on the bench, he goes to a bar, hangs out, puts his elbow on the table, puts his head in his hands, and drinks a martini to make himself feel better. You know, These are all things that people need to be able to do. But obviously, sketching isn't the best way to figure out what types of motions you're going to have, because maybe you're not a very good artist, maybe sketching only shows one pose, and you want to actually look at things in motion to really understand what's going to happen. So it's very important to go out and get reference. And I know a lot of people absolutely hate getting up in front of the camera and dancing around and looking like an idiot and making a total fool of themselves, but you got to do it. So in order to help you get past that you know, hesitation to get up there and jump around and wave your arms, a bunch of friends and I got together, put on totally ridiculous outfits, and went to downtown San Francisco, and filmed ourselves running around like crazy doing this fake parkour uh, free running, urban, you know, stylish, running around basically, and um, we had people staring at us and pointing and laughing, but we figured that you know what, for you, it's worth it. If we can, if we can get you up and out of your chair and moving around and testing your body and seeing how it moves, then then the ridicule and the laughing and the pointing and the children uh, crying and and you know the years of therapy they're all totally worth it so go ahead and take a look at that video and then we'll come back and start working on our biped rig so we've gone and collected the reference and you've watched it and you have analyzed it and you've had a really good time checking it out but I want you to check it out again and this time when you watch it start looking at the various parts of the body and thinking about how they move and not just how does the back move but what part of the back stays still and what part of the back moves when when the character's pushing off here, for example, when I'm going, I'm sitting and then I'm going to push forward and I'm pushing off and I'm releasing, look at different parts of the body, like the hand, and try and figure out what's happening. The hand's stationary, the hand's stationary as I lean forward. As I push off, the hand starts to roll forward. My arm straightens, goes from a curve to straight, and then releases as the character, as I, as the character, as me, the character, comes forward. Um, what happens with the back? It's curved, but relatively straight. Then it curves more. The shoulders hunch up. Then it kind of pushes forward and then straightens as, he li as I lift off. So these are things that you should really be looking at when you're analyzing reference to figure out what to do. You want to look at not just what the poses are, but how things are moving, where they're pivoting from, and what's not moving when something else is. The reason why you want to do this is because that's what animators do when we're looking at our reference. We're always thinking, where is the motion coming from? What's driving it? Where's the pivot? Where's the weight? And if we're doing this and we're using your tools to create our motion, you should be doing this as well so you know that you know exactly what we're thinking about and you can anticipate our needs because that is stuff that animators love. We think it's great when you do things like that. So. We're going to start working on our biped now. So how do you actually figure out what to do when you start working on the rig for your biped? How do you, where do you start? What happens? What do you do? Well, 
first thing I like to do when I start working on a character is think about the character the way people talk about it. If you're doing a biped or a human, people talk like this. He put his arm over there. She moved her leg. He dropped his head sheepishly. She socked him in the gut. Blah, blah, blah. Things like that. Um, what they do is they talk about the body part in ways that make sense. He put his arm over there. That means that basically if a character were to actually do that, that would that would break down to he lifted his clavicle, lifted his upper arm, twisted the arm, raised the forearm, broke the wrist, lifted the wrist up, maybe spread the fingers a tiny bit, then started dropping his upper arm and then let the forearm fall behind and blah, 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 blah. So if you broke it down into the individual bones, that would be a little bit complicated to talk about. People don't speak that way. They say he put his arm over there. She moved her leg. That means she probably lifted her hip, then raised her thigh, and then brought her, her lower leg, etc., etc. But again, we don't talk like that. We just say she moved her leg. And that's the way animators are going to be thinking about what the character needs to do. I have to put his hand on this. I've got to move the body over there. I've got to dip the head. I've got to do this. They'll analyze that motion and figure out what body parts are necessary to do that, but they think in terms of well-defined sections of the body. So, if you break up your rig into those sections, it's going to make it a lot easier to think about those body parts as they move around. So, for example, here's your body, and then there it is, broken apart into convenient sections that make sense. You've got the head, you've got the torso, you have arms, hands, legs, and feet.